better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hold on tight, I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. Are you looking for more information about boondocking? Because we're going to bring some your way. Today, we're headed to boondock. Yep, we've got three days of boondocking ahead of us, a couple harvest hosts, and gator, gators involved somewhere? Yeah, yeah, and that's one of the harvest hosts, because oh, okay. we're going to show you that harvest hosts are not all about the booze, although yeah. we do like that part. Yeah. But for those of you who don't drink, there's a lot more options out there. So one of them is Gatorland, so that should be a lot of fun. Yep. So we're getting ready to leave for our three-day boondocking um, travels. Um, and one of the things we want to do before we left is fill our freshwater tank to its full capacity. And that's 90 gallons for us. Uh, we could hunt and find um, other water sources along the way. There's some campgrounds that let you come in, pay, and, and fill up. But we're only going about 200 miles today, so we figured we're here. We'll fill it up. Um, so we'll start off with a full tank. Um, the other thing, as you can tell by the picture, is our gray is full and our black is empty. So you can tell when we're really not watching our water, what fills up first and the fastest. So we're going to empty the, both the black and the gray before we hit the road as well. And the other thing we're going to do, we're going to turn off the electric hot water heater. Um, one, it's going to save on the battery as we're driving down the road, although we'll be recharging but it's just something to remember so that when we get there we don't forget that it's on and it sucks down the battery so we'll cut that off we won't use it while we're boondocking we'll just use our uh, gas water heater um, for our hot water so one of the things we want to make sure we do before we go boondock is to make sure that our tanks are, are empty minus a little bit of water in the black tank just to keep things from from hardening drying out yeah drying out okay we'll go with that mm -hmm. Um, so you keep a little bit of water in your black tank, but you make sure your gray is completely empty. That's what we're doing now. We're making sure our tanks are empty. I'm flushing the black and I'll put a little bit in there before we head out. Did you make it? Did you break free? Did you manage to be who you want to be? Maybe somewhere you think about me too. Okay, we made it to our first boondocking stop, the first Harvest Host. We're at a um, brewery. Um, and one of the things we want to make sure is that we're keeping uh, an eye on our um, batteries. So right now, we're, we just stopped. The battery's charged on the way here. Um, we're at 12.6 volts. When it gets down to about 12, um, I will go ahead and turn the generator on and, and charge the batteries. We have four lead-acid batteries, so we're not gucci by any stretch of the imagination they came with the rig and that's what we have eventually we'll upgrade them so just know what type of batteries you have that way you can keep control or keep an eye on your batteries as well so another thing we do to, to keep uh, on top of our electrical consumption is we'll start disconnecting some of the power socks like the, the coffee pot we'll just unplug it and then when we're ready to use it we'll plug it in and then we have to turn the generator on now the microwave is another power suck, so instead of reaching my, my short little arms all the way in the, in the back here to unplug it, I'll just go to the breaker and trip it. Right now the batteries indicate that 12.6 would equal 100% charge. Um, when I say I want to monitor, monitor them and not let them get below 12, or around 12 is when I'll cut it on, that gives me about 50% of my battery life, and that's essentially all I can do before I start running out of power. Um, so 12.6 for us is 100%. 12-ish, 12.1, we'll hit the generator on and recharge our batteries. All right, so our harvest host is called Bayou Tech Brewing. Uh, they have wood fire pizza and of course beer, because it's a brewery. Um, so even though, yes, I know we just said in our last video that we're trying to be good and we're on a diet, We've eaten good all day, so this couch is, is some spare room. That's how I'm looking at it. All right, so we just finished a 
standing pizza and a very yummy blonde. Okay, I still didn't have a blonde. I had blonde a blonde. Beer. Blonde beer. Let's go with the blonde beer. Oh, stop it. Oh man, it was so delicious. If you're coming through 10 and you need a place to stop, this is the place to stop. Show them your gifts. Oh, yeah. We have gifts. <laughs> I guess they're pretty popular for harvest hosts. So if you guys want to come, they've had up to 14 harvest hosts in a night. So they have plenty of room behind um, their building there for more people. back from a tour of the brewery and it was pretty freaking cool yeah, that, that was a good little tour i mean there was a lot of history in there and i was yeah. I'm even more impressed with this place now yeah it was pretty awesome um like i said they usually have about four people um a day but they can hold much more than that i forget how many acres 15 acres or yeah. i don't know it's pretty huge here so if you're coming through um louisiana off the 10 this is definitely somewhere to stop if you want to stay more than one day they'll let you and they're gonna put in full well okay not full hookups they're gonna put in electric and um water so if you want partial hookups pretty soon this definitely will be the place to stop yeah bayou tesh brewery that's how you say it, yes. Bayou Tech, Bayou yep. Tesh And we got a free beer. Um, it's 18%. 18% and it was it was aged in a whiskey barrel. Yeah, they have, um, what company was it? Jack Daniels? Oh yeah, it was Jack Daniels. It's yeah. one of them, yeah. Um, barrels, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So they have so. whiskey and wine barrels that they, they age some of their beer in too. Yeah. So. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was a really cool tour. Really friendly here. They're here at 7 a.m. So they invited us for coffee for tomorrow morning. So, of course, we're coffee lovers. So we'll be there. We're checking the batteries. We're at 12.3-ish percent, which is about 70% charge. So I'm going to um, turn the generator on, let it run for a couple of hours while we sit here. They're about closed, so there's nobody else outside um, the brewery. And uh, we're gonna charge up the batteries and that'll get us till tomorrow morning. All right, so the generator's been running for about an hour now. So we're gonna head, go ahead and cut it off, check the batteries, and then close her up and go to bed. Well, we made it about nine and a half hours last night um, off the generator. Uh, we're at 12.4 on the panel, which is about um, 80%. Um, so that's pretty good for us. Um, so now I'm gonna turn the generator on so we can fire up the coffee pot heating element inside the coffee pot it's just a big power suck so we always um, um, turn the generator on just before we hit the uh, on button we are headed out of the um, brewery and headed to our next location um, water wise we're doing fine our plan is just so you know, we did not shower this morning. Do not freak out. This is not smell -o vision No. Our plan is when we get to our next location, there's a Planet Fitness close by. So we're going to hit the gym first and then shower. Um, a lot of times we use Planet Fitness when we don't have full hookups, especially once when we were at a core of a um, engineer park when we didn't have sewer. So we went to the gym every day and we showered there and that saved on filling up the tank. So um, just a thought if you are a Planet Fitness member or if you're thinking about becoming a men member. So that's another way to help out um, saving on the water. We've made it to a rest stop. We're just inside Mississippi. Um, they have a gorgeous rest stop here. So we stopped here. Um, so Focus stretched his leg. I've already taken Giz out. And as you can see, it started pouring as soon as I got out there. But um, we're also going to do lunch while we're here. Um, so of course, the microwave is a huge power suck. So we do need to turn the generator for, on for that. And again, normally I know for, um, for a traveling day, I always like to have something in the fridge on hand for us to eat. You could do sandwiches. I'm not a big sandwich person, but um, make sure you sandwiches. going through a drive through in this rig just is not going to happen. So we'd like to be prepared. Uh, All right. And now we just need to hit the switch, the breaker um, to turn the microwave back on. And power wise, we are all set. Um, water wise, we've hardly used any water at all. Um, 
when we left, we weren't quite full. We had two ticks instead of three, so we weren't quite topped off, but we aren't boondocking long term, so we're not going to be out in the desert for three or four weeks. Um, we know we're only doing three nights, so we're not as strict on the water as if we were going to be out for a week. All our lunch is all heated up. Why not? Um, I am turning off the generator because really we only needed it for the microwave. Now I'm going to hit the breaker and um, turn that back off again because we're not going to want it to draw um, power while we're sitting at our next location. So we'll just leave that in the off position. We're going to have our yummy lunch and we'll be on the road again. I thought I would catch everyone up on our power. Um, last night we came in from the gym. Um, we were still at like 12.6, 12.7. So we didn't run the uh, generator until in the evening about eight or nine o'clock. We ran it for about an hour. This morning we got up and we were at about 12, uh, 5, 12.4. Um, again, we ran the generator for about an hour. So as you can see, we're at about 12.9 now. So we're doing really well. We're here on uh, day two of our boondocking harvest host trip. And we're at the Gulf Coast Gator Ranch in Moss Point, Mississippi. So this morning, we're gonna take a walk through the Gator Ranch, hopefully catch them do some feedings with chickens um, and also take an airboat ride. Yeah, which is right over there. checking out some of these alligators here and some of them are pretty huge. One is over 14 feet. Yeah, 14.3 is their biggest one. Yeah, um, a lot of these alligators are what they call nuisance alligators, meaning they were in people's backyards, swimming pools, they were taking the puppies in the neighborhood. So um, wildlife game and fishery calls these um, calls the people here and they come and get them and bring them and put them here at their place. Yeah, they've got about 50-ish gators here. Um, back when Katrina, before Katrina hit, they had about 250 gators here. So you can see stay standing underneath the Katrina line. That's as high as the water went. All right, we're about to get our own little water boat tour with Tim. Yep, looking this, forward to it. This should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, that was a blast. That was totally worth stopping here. And Tim, our um, our, our boat captain, yep. he was really fun. Yeah, this was this was um, hard to believe that it's, uh, it falls under the Harvest Host umbrella. I mean, yeah, so think... see, not all breweries and wineries. Yeah, not that we don't love those because we do, but there are a lot of different options from um, golf courses to museums to farms to places like this, just like really unique yeah, cool places. Yeah, this this was part educational, part thrill ride. Yeah. Um, so if you're passing through this area, you gotta stop. I Gulf mean, Coast Gator Ranch. Yeah. So we've decided to have a change of plans. Instead of staying at the last place for two nights, um, we finished everything we wanted to do. It was only like, what, 10, 30, 11? So we decided, let's keep on going. We are not gonna make it three days boondocking, but that's just because we decided to go to a different location. Yeah, the other one, we, we took the boat ride. It was done sooner than we thought, and bad weather was coming in, so we figured we'd get a jump on it. And that's the beauty of our being. If you wanna go, you go. If yeah. you wanna stay more days, you stay more days. So we elected to go, and we're glad we did, because this RV park is 
wait. Yeah, it is a very nice park. It's right on the lake. It's a county park. It was only 1950 a night. It's a huge marina, so there's a ton of guys here with their fishing boats, um, but it's really nice. So, that being said, I do want to give you guys a little more info on boondocking because so many people are asking about us, so I think we should start with power. Okay, good start. So, um, of course, everybody's rig is a little different as far as how many batteries you have, what you have on board that you need to provide power to, whether it's a propane fridge, um, a full-size residential, residential fridge. fridge, how many batteries you have, you know, what, what you have plugged in. So we're just going to give some basic tips to help you out with boondocking. Mm -hmm. yeah. So first of all, you do have to have a power source. <laughs> you, you do. <laughs> Um, and for us, it would be our generator um, to help um, recharge our four lead-acid batteries that we have on board. Yeah, so if you don't have a generator on board, like with a Class A, of course you can purchase one to charge your batteries that way. Yeah. Um, next is to unplug anything that might have some kind of trickle-down effect and be stealing some of your battery charge. And anything with a clock on it is sucking your battery. Yeah, and for us, we found a few of those power socks and we disconnected them at the breaker. We've unplugged them, like Stacy said. Yeah. Um, and when we're when we're on our own power, one side of the rig, the outlets don't work anyway. So that's a help for us. So we as a nice reminder. Yeah, and we switched, you know, the things that we do need to the one side to the passenger side, um, and we're able to continue to charge as needed that way. So other things to think about are. Um, cell phone chargers, any kind of battery chargers, they all will suck power even if your phones aren't plugged into them. So make sure you pull them from the wall, um, like we did the coffee pots, um, any other appliances, you'll be surprised how many actually pull power even when you're not using them. Yeah, we're, we're able to go, you know, a good nine, ten hours without having to charge. How often you need to turn on your generator to charge your batteries is really, again, going to depend on, you know, how much power suck you have and how many batteries you have. For us, we usually um, turn on our generator at least twice a day. Yep. So we'll turn it on first thing in the morning. We have to to turn the coffee pot on. Which is a must. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we're respectful and, you know, if we're in close proximity to other folks, we'll wait till about 7, 7.15. Sorry, that's all you get. But we're turning it on because we need our coffee. Um, and then we may turn it on the mid middle of the day to run the, the uh, microwave and it's only for a short minute and then in the evening we may run it an hour or two hours just depending on how much is drawn down through the day. Now, you know, we are not talking about running uh, air conditioners, washers and dryers, anything like that while boondocking. Although if our generator is running, we can run our AC, but we're not talking about all that extra stuff. We're just talking about the regular stuff that you need yeah. for day-to-day -day lights, um, you know, your outlets, that kind of thing. Yep, absolutely. Of course, the next thing we're going to talk about is our water. Yep. And again, depending on how long you're going to be boondocking will determine how much you need to conserve your water. And it's going to be based on the size of your tanks yep. and how much water you're sucking out of your tank. Yeah, so the, the name of the game with your water is is using it wisely. Um, not letting it um, waste down the drain into the gray or the black. Um, and it's just some of the tips that we've given you earlier on how to conserve your water and yeah. maintain what you have. Uh, is going to be key into how long you can stay out before you have to run back somewhere and get water. And there are a ton of things you can do. We did make a video last week and talked about some of the ways we conserve our water. Um, and of course, one of the biggest things that people were reminding us that we didn't talk about is what we do with our soapy water when we're done with it. We don't just dump it down our drain into the gray tank because nope. that's the first tank that fills up. We will put it in our black tank. We'll use it to flush the black tank or we'll just dump it into the black tank to get rid of it. Yeah, we it'll take us forever to fill up a 50 gallon black tank. So we'll use that as our excess yeah. dishwater yeah. normally goes there. And that really helps. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Yeah, we, we've gotten a lot better since we started. And of course, all the things that we talked about that we learned along the way are really helping us in our, our water conservation when we're boondocking. Yeah, and there's a ton of resources out there for you to look at. Your biggest resource is just going to be to do it. Just yeah. jump in and don't be afraid. Just go out and play with it. If you're not yeah. too sure of you know going far and boondocking, go to a local state park or go to a campground. Just pull in and unhook. 
Yeah, unplug. See how far you can go with your tanks. You know, yeah. smaller rigs have smaller tanks, and you really have to negotiate your water use and what you're going to use uh, when. So that's a great way to practice, yeah. and that way you have the comfort and safety of well, safety. We don't really need safety, but you have the comfort of knowing if you get wiped out, you can plug right back in. Yeah, and that's I mean that's probably the best tip that we could give you is just go. You know, learn what your capacity are, what your yeah. need is on your yeah. day to day, and go from there. So let's talk about harvest hosts. We do love Harvest Hosts. There are so many options for you out there that you guys can check out. And you technically, you don't have to buy anything when you go there. No, no. We, we seem to do that, and we seem to spend way more money Harvest Hosting on wine and beer or pizza, pizza. Yeah. whatever. But you don't have to. You can go in for a quick overnight and leave. We did that once at a museum in Lafayette. Um, we went in their parking lot. We slept. We got up. We were gone before they opened the next day, and they were really cool with that. So... Um, you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money when you go to a harvest host. No, but part of staying at a harvest host is you want to kind of pay it forward a little bit. You know, they're allowing us as RVers use their their businesses to, you know, lay down for the night, if you will. Um, even if you went in and just had, you know, a drink um, or went in and bought a bottle of whatever. Or um, at the farm stands. There are a lot of farms yeah. where you can get fresh fruits and vegetables. Those, we haven't hit one yet and I can't wait because I will stock up on that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a good, you know, good kind of giving it back. And you get to see some pretty cool things, meet some pretty cool people. Yeah. And, of course, we like to eat and drink. No particular order. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed that yet. Um, but it's just a great way to, to taste the local, yeah. you know, um, local cuisine, fare, if you yeah, will. Yeah. yeah. So, it's we, we like them. If you're thinking about joining, we are going to put a link down below that will save you 15%. And, um, and make sure you use the code that's with it. <laughs> Right. Who doesn't like to save 15%? That's right. That, we are all about saving money. Because saving 15% on your, your harvest host sign up will allow you to buy more pizza, wine, and And, and beer. Yeah, that's right. So that's right. And the and more take. you stay, it all balances out, right? <laughs> yeah. It's give and take. All right. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell. And we'll see you on, on the, the road. road. Oh, and there's no bloopers. Yeah. Sorry about the bloopers. We must be getting better. Um, Either that or she's beat me about the head, so I'm I'm on point now. I think he's just getting boring. <laughs> Never has that ever been said about him. Because yeah. we're about to hit up some harvest hosts. Yep. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yep. <laughs> you got jokes, do you? Oh, wise ass. Yep. That's what you do? I know, that's my line.